See that ridge line? And you follow it all the way around, it's just a big ridge line. And it goes up there at the top of that wash, and then this ridge line comes all the way down next to us, and then we're down in this hollow spot. That's the area that we're going to work in, okay? This, this ridge line over behind me, all the way around in a circle, basically. That's our, that's our area. And once I show you this, I'm just going to show you like a scaled down version, or just a part of it, actually, and then I'm going to run around coaching, folks. What this is, is it's called a thermal shelter. And this is, this is the first thing I teach anybody for outdoor survival. And this class is a little bit different. It's kind of a winter camping slash outdoor survival. Normally we come in just with the clothes on our back, but I wanted to clear up some gear stuff first because I think that's beneficial. Um, this is worst case scenario. I'm out here in just my clothes. I have no ax, no saw, no knife, no tools, just nature and my hand. So what we're looking for is some type of situation where you've got a crotch in a tree like this or a rock or a broken tree or anything but it, it, it doesn't need to be too high and this one actually is probably bordering on too high you, you want it to be when you stand in the tree you want it to be about halfway between your knee and your hip about mid quadricep level roughly as a gauge that's, and this one's slightly more than that, plus you factor in the diameter of the main pole. We're going to end up somewhere in here, but I'm just doing demonstration, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do is try to find a something that has a little bit of structural integrity uh, that I can put into that crotch. And this might work. We'll do a test. Yeah, good enough. Good enough for what we're doing. And probably use that skinny end. So what you get, this is just to give you guys some visual reference. I would not be this tall if I'm really building one. That's already too much. So this is, this is our ridge line. To give you an idea of the scale, what you want is when you lay down on your side, you want about a hand's width on the inside of the shelter between you and the inner dimension of that ridge line. We're basically building a glorified sleeping bag. Think small, okay? Biggest mistake, people try to build the Taj Mahal. You just want something that's gonna retain your body heat, that's it. Now, we're gonna find, we could pretend that the top of the shelter would probably be right about here. See the difference? Mm -hmm. That's really what I'm after. Uh, and I could do that a few other ways. I could stack some things up to the side of the tree and lay my lodge on it. So, let's say this is the top, about this high. What I'm looking for are some sticks that are fairly straight. I just start with stuff like this. And since we don't have tools, we're gonna have to get creative. Because believe it or not, you're gonna have to have some very exacting measurements. And I'll explain the reasons for that. One possible technique is to stick it into the tree. I may get into your camera space. Slide it into there and then grab it and use your body. Notice I'm at my hip, I'm at my core, and I'm not doing this so when it snaps I don't fall and injure myself. I'm moving my whole body. So I get a piece and I know where it's going to break. It's going to break right there so I can measure. I just have to go down and get my uh, partner. So sure. <clears throat> this is still too long, <clears throat> so I want to measure it. And think steep roof pitch. We want our roof pitch because how wide's your body? So I, we don't need to be way out here, right? And the bigger you make this, the more labor you're creating for yourself because you want to shingle this thing. We'll get into that technique. Two feet, optimally. In really bad weather you want 24 inches it's a lot of work so I figure my roof pitch roughly <clears throat> and I figure my height needs to be right about here so what I don't want is I don't want my pieces on the side this is very important I don't want them running past this up here so that when my duff layer stops here and the rain hits it guess what happens it's coming for you so uh, you get your mark, you can make a mark or just kind of hold it where you want it to be. And then you can put it back into your little chuck and break it. Or you can just try doing some wild, uh, 
like that. And pieces go flying, you might use them, you might not. So we don't have an axe, we're just kind of making do. And if it's a little long, you can go into the dirt, you can use your heel, think out of the box, use what you have for tools. So I'm about there, I can live with that. And now I'm gonna work from here down. And just so I can kind of see the ground, I'm gonna kind of move that out. They don't all have to be straight as an arrow, but I don't want to get into stuff that's too funky. Hey Dalton, is there good sites that uh, actually show this and have it? There's the only way to learn this stuff is to come out here and do it. Because it gives you an experiential point of reference. Once you've done this, you can look at the sun and go, okay, I got that much daylight. You know, is it attainable? Is it something I can do? This looks is gonna look really simple, but it's very time consuming because you have no tools. But you see what I'm going for is just this type of action. And you can get a side view of that later. I'm keeping things fairly touching. See, that has structural integrity to it. And I do, I want to do a scan too. Is there anything up there that in a windstorm is gonna fall down and kill me? Look for that. Uh, if, if it's warmer weather, you wouldn't be doing this kind of shelter. But it's always a good idea to look for burrows of insects and any any potential hazards. So we're going to continue this all the way to the bottom. And I'm just looking around for sticks. Even small ones. I'm just going to start. What I like to do is just throw them over to where my pile is. To just get the materials in the area where I'm going to work. And they don't all have to be strong. But you do want some strong ones mixed in with it. Yeah. Standing dead material like this is good. Just take that. And it's pretty straight. You want to help? You want to lift this stick? What's that? To help look this I've got probably enough for purposes of what I'm going to do here. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to get some ideas of measurements. I'm just using what I have for a tool, and if it breaks, that worked out even better. This is kind of caveman stuff we're into here. And just find your way where on that plane the link fits in. Perfecto mente bien. That's too rotten to even really be worth doing. Notice I close my eyes when I hit that? Just for a second. Because I don't have I don't have any safety glasses. You broke your main log. So these are all different tactics, feet and everything else. Okay. Now, that's our frame. And if we want to do some filler, if we have big gaping holes, 
there's nothing wrong with laying some stuff at the base on the sides because keep in mind you have to hold leaves so you're going to piece this in and you'll continue that all the way down on both sides yeah If you can stick it in the ground, that's going to be a plus. It's going to be even stronger that way. Throw that back over here. I'm going to use that. There it went. This is our little demo job. Obviously, we would pick a little heavier deal, but I'm just trying to get you a visual. This will work. Now our height's right. Are you supposed to start at the tree? It doesn't really matter as long as you can get in and out. Some of these longer ones will angle. Yeah. One of the things also to take into consideration is uh, the drainage in your area. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. See where this fellow's sitting over here? Don't Actually, know. when we get done, this won't matter. Right. I, I know, right here. You're just doing this as a demonstration, but I'm just... No, I mean it won't matter if you're in a hole. Well, if you're in a drainage area like this right here and the water runs down that way, you might have a problem. You're going to be dry in this. Okay. I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Okay. We're actually going to build inside of this. Uh, kind of a structure Because a lot of times I'll use a depression for this kind of shelter on purpose So once you get your wall Whatever that is This is enough for us to teach on Is you're going to make shingles out of leaves the way you do that Is you're going to gather up a big pile of leaves you can use your hands or you can use your feet, like a V-shape, to gather up a big pile. Big sticks, as you fill them, just kind of weed them out. And what you're after This is a specific way of doing it, but there's a reason for it. You're going to run your hand and arm under it. And I like to lay flat and take my forearm and pack, pack the leaves down. Add more in, pack them down. What I created was a shingle. I'm gonna take that shingle, just like you shingle a roof. I'm gonna start half on and half off my structure on the ground. See how I split the difference? And I'm gonna pull my hand out from under it. That is a shingle, okay? Then, in the sake of speed, same deal, shingle here. Then I split that difference between those two shingles. Once I've compacted my next shingle, it'll go there. See how it drips onto this one? Okay. Mm -hmm. This will turn water. So you do that until you have 24 inches of duff. Yeah. That's insulatory value and it's waterproof. We have poured barrels on these, mm. okay? Steep roof pitch, you do it all the way to the top. Then the last thing you do is you start at the bottom, come up the ridge. Because these two come together and then we need to do shingles moving up this way to turn water. Now, <coughs> for inside the shelter, what Jim was talking about. If you choose to be in a low spot, which I like to do a lot because when I build this, it just looks like part of the earth. 
is you want to get off the ground because that's one of the ways we lose heat, right? We take a warm body and we put it on a cold ground and it's going to pull your body heat out. And if it rains, you got runoff. You're going to take sticks and you're going to run them kind of like, I'll do it out here, kind of like a lattice work, okay? You're going to run them this way. Then you're going to come back progressively getting smaller. Then you're going to come this way. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to go this way. And your last run should be the width of your body. Because when you roll over in there, if you do your sticks vertically, they, they just splay to the outside. So your last run should be like this. And then lastly, you're going to pack this thing full of leaves all the way to the roof. And pack it down. And pack it and pack it until you can pack no more. And then you're just, you're just going to get your body in there. Okay? Does everybody have a mental image of what we're after? That's kind of what we're going to do. So this would be if you do not have a sleeping bag. Yeah. This is if, uh-oh, I'm in a survival situation. I have no kit, no backpack, no knife, no tool, no lighter, no nothing. I don't need a fire. I don't need tools. I have spent 14 degree nights in this. Really? I spent a zero degree night in one of these. Wow. And no permanent injury. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You do have two names there. Mm -hmm. Got three or four. But yeah, see, these are the key things, though. Just don't come past your ridge line because the last thing we're going to do is we're going to pack those shingles and we're going to start at the bottom because, see, this is going to run. And obviously, we, you get your when you're going to build one, not like this for just demo purposes, but to scale, you're going to want it. You're going to lay down and just measure it to where it's slightly longer and slightly <coughs> wider. Just barely, you know what I mean? You, you don't want to make it any bigger than you have to. What, what heats this shelter? You do. So the more efficient it is, the better, because you're the furnace that's going to power this thing. It's basically a glorified sleeping bag, a really nice one that you're not going to die in. But I've slept in some gnarly weather in these things, and that's, how, that's pretty much how you do it. You just find ways to break things down how you want it. But choose your, your ridge pole. I mean, this is just kind of rotten, but for demo, you might not use this one, and I prefer, I really wouldn't use this tree or this location. I, there's a spot up there I scouted I really like, but just so everybody can see it, this is it. And so you know your area, where you're limited to. I'm going to be in the middle tonight so I can kind of see and hear everything around me. And we'll go over some emergency procedures later if we have issues. We're going to assign people up in pairs of two. You don't have to sleep together. I know we got a lot of couples here that will physically do that, and you should because that's what you do in the real world. You, you use that heat. But the guys that are alone, that's cool, but we're going to kind of camp near each other, near enough where the spoken word, you know, help. <laughs> you can hear each other. I'll partner Drew with somebody.